Hi everybody, Peter of England here. The next webinar, as was promised on the 23rd of February, is now taking place, as you can see by the, uh, the notice here, on the 23rd of March, and that will be at 6 o'clock London time, which I think that's N New York time is around about noon. Um, and so the topic that I'm going to cover on that webinar is pertinent to all those people that attended the previous webinar. And if you didn't attend the previous webinar, then it's equally going to be as important for those people who've purchased the, um, the Lazarus Taxon document off the Wearbank website and also the one called Sacrament. So those two documents are um, dovetailed into each other. But one of the more important things and more practical things I want to address is really getting you started because it's okay downloading the document, it's okay reading the document and for those who have purchased the document I really do um, advise you to print it off physically and don't try and read it on Kindle or your laptop uh, or your desktop computer because the retention uh, probabilities are greatly reduced when you're reading something off, a, off an electronic screen. Uh, once you print it off, it's got a life of its own and you can mark it um, with your pen and make notes and take it into the bathroom in the morning or whatever you uh, want to do with it. Um, so that's what I would advise. Um, now, having said that, um, the people who've already purchased that document, one or the other, the Lazarus Taxon or Sacrament, um, the next thing is really to bring into a practical consideration or a practical re arena how to put it in, in place, how to begin. And for many of you, the first port of call needs to be the preparation of your birth certificate, preparing a living will, getting a copy of your national insurance number or social security number, and also then making a statutory declaration. I know in the United States and in some countries it's not called a statutory declaration. Many of you will uh, refer to it as an affidavit, but in effect, the uh, effect is the same. Um, the main benefit in uh, common law, uh, English law countries, is that you can just walk into any court with your document and read it aloud. Sometimes maybe you might need to make an appointment. And that then statutory declaration, as it then becomes, once you've read it aloud in the court, uh, attests to the, the statement that you are given, not to its veracity. It will then get be stamped in the court, and then you can take it out and make copies of it uh, for sending to the creditors. So the statutory declaration is the first part of your paperwork because as it says in the document itself for those who actually uh, took the um, Lazarus Taxon or as it's called sub, uh, subheading uh, credited us on tort um, the main thrust of this is to prepare your last appearance in a statutory environment before you become um, the beneficiary under the reclamation of the trust that was supposedly forfeit to the Crown through the mainly the 1666 Sesui Key V Act, Section 1, presuming that you have left, um, you have left the domain or you have left the, uh, the estate, uh, you've gone overseas and you have not returned. And on the basis of that, the, the, the judge in charge, which is typically the judiciary itself or the crown estates, assume that you were missing uh, beyond the, or over the seas and therefore not reclaiming your estate, it was forfeit and now the crown looks after it. So unless you actually come along and redress that situation, you will always be in the situation that you are currently in, where you are in effect the trustee paying for everything. Uh, I do reiterate that there are lots of different interpretations of how to reclaim the estate out there, but most of them involve a long process of understanding and learning about trusts, uh, about the legal system, and about various financial and um, tax-related forms 
that need to be filled in and filed and the UCC1 and uh, UCC3 and on and on for those people in America. But what we are doing here is we're going on a very, very simplified route to goal where the the fundamental outcome here is that you will, after you've made your statutory declaration and you've got that piece of paper in your hand stamped, that is the final time you will be in a statutory environment and all further appearances therefore will be special appearance or uh, what's called a protective order appearance or in camera, which means you are presenting your paperwork in chancery and appointing the judge you appointing the judge as your, your, uh, your guardian and protector and facilitator now for the reclamation. In effect, you could use an analogy as you are uh, not so much a prodigal son, but a minor uh, that has come and found out that he has a trust estate. He doesn't quite know what to do, how to claim it, and therefore he's gone to the trustee and said, I need help in these matters. So. That's just so everybody knows where this, this uh, webinar event will, will be directing you. We'll touch on a few other subjects, but the prime thrust is getting you started. And so for those of you who don't have the document already, uh, I think you need to get it or at least look into what a statutory declaration is and start preparing so you can use that after, after the um, the, the webinar is finished. But the key is to actually get off your ass and go to the court or to the notary if you're in the United States and to do it. Okay, that's the key. And that's where the push has got to be because until you actually bring this into a, a 3D environment, it is again just words on a piece of paper or uh, a video on a screen. Let's start to begin to take action, okay? Now, on to a, a subtopic, because otherwise the video will be finishing here, and I think I've only run for around about maybe five or, or, or seven minutes. Um, and that's much too short, because I know you like listening to everything I have to say. Um, what I'm touching on here is for all those people out there um, who could have this video passed on to them, who need a little bit of a heads up, a warning, the banking situation that is currently unfurling globally now is something that you just know it's a setup. And it's a setup to bring in Klaus Schwab's World Economic Forum reset agenda to bring in central bank digital currency, um, central bank digital currency with a timestamp on it whereby you only have a certain period of time to spend your central bank digital units before they go out of existence and equally therefore they are controlled and can be uh, switched on or off at will just like they are done through the, um, the social credit scoring system in, uh, in China um, which is what the neocons, the global elite, the global banking elite, the oligarchs, not only in Russia, but in the rest of the world, the Warren Buffetts and the Elon Musks and the Bill Gates, etc., all want to introduce into the world. And uh, that's their club. You're not in it, but it is the club that they want to bash you over the head with day in, day out. So, with that being said, how do we know that it's a setup? Well, the date on which it happened for a start, as those who followed my channel um, in the past will uh, be aware of, um, there is something called the Lucifer Rebellion, and there is something called uh, a, a normal, normal sort of uh, progression of detail. Now, 11, uh, is a very, very, um, should we say, Luciferian, satanic number on which the world's elite love to operate because it's a sign of a, a double, double energy. It's symbolic with the Twin Towers. It's symbolic with the, the signing of the armistice um, for the First World War, 11 minutes past 11 on the 11th of November and on and on and on the Twin Towers, 9-11, on it goes. So for those who are interested in things like 
um, numerology or Solomonic Kabbalistic numerology, then there are lessons to be drawn and days that are quite um, predictive on the way they move. So when these things happen and move on certain dates, they're usually a sign, and for those people in the know, a tip-off uh, as to when to not be in a certain place at a certain time, or when to not be in the markets, or to be in the markets. So, as I've referred to, I think, people before, you've got something called a, a flower of life pattern, uh, symbolized by this here, and it's a fundamental um, aspect of the works of um, Leonardo da Vinci, and you will have seen the, the, uh, the geometries that are around man. Um, so that is the, the center, the central depiction of, same image again, the central depiction of the flower uh, the seed of life within the flower of life. It's a fundamental geography or geometry which is prevalent in the entire universe. Okay? Now, the difference between that and what I've shown to people before is something that has a double center in it. And you can see here that you've got the, the vision of what's called the two eyes. So that is basically the entire pretext of the nature of the fall of man or the fall of the Son of God moving into time and space and forgetting its inheritance and where it came from. So the entire holographic nature of multi-universal dimensions runs around the fact that there is only one center and anything that proclaims that there is more than one center is creating uh, diversity, is creating separation and diversity and separation is not unity. And if there is only the central creative source, everything really must go back to it eventually. Everything that's moving away from that or projecting that as an... As a, um, unfavorable perspective or idea is playing into the hands of the universal role of the Lucifer rebellion and the sons that separated and wanted to experiment or look at time and space and with the ego then to set their throne above that of God. And therein lies the guilt and the shame and the conflict that is your, your daily dose of fear and war and criminality and suspicion and every other thing that is, um, should we say, violently destructive to the spiritual form in which you, you, you should be existing. Now, having said that, these are the mechanics behind the agenda of where you're being taken now. The members, the senior members, the seniority um, the, the meritocracy within this elitist establishment are looking to take you in a certain direction. And they're playing it out by, in part, numerology. So what I'm going to say to you now is the very fact that you know that the, the, the collapsing of these three banks, beginning on Friday the 11th, it was Friday the 11th, has a, a mark, a fingerprint, a watermark, uh, a smoke at the end of the gun to show it was shot. Because what we have is three banks that went down, yeah? We have S, V, B. We had, uh, I think the other one was called uh, Silver... Silver... can't remember. Uh, one was called Signature... Yeah, and Silvergate. So, with all the banks in the United States uh, and worldwide, what are the chances that the three that go down on the 11th 
all have an S. In fact, not only do they have an S, they have an S and an I because that is called Silicon Valley Bank. So Silicon Valley Bank, Signature and Silvergate. And if we look at a typical, uh, generally accepted numerological outline on a table here, they run from one to nine and we've got then the letters here. And so what we have is our lovely S here depicting one. So we've got the one, the one, and the one. And the difference between one and zero is complete completion. Yeah? The numbers one to four, when added together, give you ten. That's why there are only four codons in human DNA, A, D, G, T, A, G, A, G, C, A, G, C, T, sorry. So here you have the one representing spirit and zero representing matter. As long as you've got spirit first, you can have as many pieces of matter as you want and you increase. However, if you put it the other way around, a zero, then it doesn't matter how much spirit you pack in behind, you're getting less and less and less. You're diminishing your credibility. And so what we have here is this one and one is, this is God-centered and this is the Lucifer rebellion, Lucifer's challenge to the continuity of the God or the, 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 the sonship. So whether you believe it is a, the point, they believe it and they move on it and this is what the agenda is that's opening behind. And then comes the, the week after the weekend. So we go into 11, 12, 30, the week of the 14th. We've run from 14th now coming up to the 17th, 18th, and the next bank that goes or gets into trouble, a bank that represents around about 10% of the bond holding capacity of the European zone is called Credit, Credit Suisse. So that's what I'd like to ask you to look at and to consider there are things that are happening behind the background, behind the scenes that are on a, a numerological, quantum, astrological level, the likes of which you probably will never even suspect, but in which are, are being worked through. Why this is now important for a heads up for all of you going forward now is that something is going to happen. And because they bailed out this bank, um, the FDIC component of the bailout was breached when this bank went down. So what this is going to mean for you in the long term is we know that the banks are going to now start tumbling. And why do we know it? It's because what the Biden administration came in to do. 95% 95% of the deposits in that bank were not covered. Even though the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Company, since 1933, introduced by um, uh, Roosevelt, to back up all deposits in banks so people could be, be safely uh, and confident that they could put their deposits into banks, um, most of the bank, uh, sorry, most of the, the deposits or most of the, the loaning and the lending in this bank were two businesses that had a massive amount of exposure into the crypto market. There were small businesses, there were startups. So the money that would either been loaned or been put on deposit wasn't protected because it only goes up to $250,000. It's $250,000. Thousand dollars. That's all. Ninety-five percent of the people or the small companies in here had way, way over that, and therefore a problem occurred. As 
these deposits would have caused a massive, uh, the lock, lack of deposit would have caused a, a massive uh, tsunami in the banking world. The Biden administration came in and basically said, don't worry, we'll back it all. And in fact, what we did then is we had something called quantitative easing, where in effect, the Federal Reserve has stepped in behind the scenes and bought this out. They've paid all these people no matter what. So if you had three million in, if you had three billion in, don't worry, you got the money. Now what that has done is it opened up a precedent in the banking industry, and let's just use America for now, where it's just exposed approximately conservatively around about 7 trillion of uninsured deposits through the FDIC in the United States banking system. So what it's in effect saying is that all those people out there that weren't covered, i.e. they had more than 250,000, they're all covered now. And with that coverage comes this exposure and if we cascade it onto what's called a, a secondary level, it could be as high as 18 trillion. And what that's going to mean is that across the board now, something called inflation is going to begin to raise its ugly head. And if you think 5% inflation before on food and goods and fuel was a problem, now you're going to start seeing it climb up because this combined with the amount of money that's being pumped into Ukraine by most of the countries of the world, but particularly the United States, is going to cause such inflation because the amounts that they've had to print and the amounts now that have been unleashed because of this now blanket coverage of these, these deposits is going to make probably 2008 seem like just a, 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 small, a small bank in Indiana or a small bank in Sydney going down. The repercussions are starting to be felt and it isn't going to go away. And so what I'm also alerting to you, alerting you to is, uh, let's put this in so you, you won't forget it. And for people who are coming on to the webinar, I'll give you more information on it. April the 10th, the week beginning, is a major turn in what's called the economic confidence model uh, portrayed very effectively and very uh, timely by a chap called Martin Armstrong. So if you don't know who Marty Armstrong is, he's actually called a forecaster. I'd go and have a look at some of his work. Go and look on um, uh, AskSocrates.com or I think also Armstrong Economics. He does some amazing work and almost all the central banks, most of the governments in the world who are still possibly just about hanging on to some type of, uh, well, what would we do if, consult him. So um, that's as far as I want to go now. I think we've covered everything in considerable detail. It's a heads up really to everybody out there. If you've got some cash in the bank, get it out and have a little bit in your pocket. Um, if you haven't, then there's no need to worry. But this isn't going to go away. The canoe is just about on the tipping point on the falls. And we know it's a setup with a view to destabilize the cryptocurrencies, with a view to introducing the central bank digital currency with a problem, reaction, solution. And they're going to do it by robbing you of your deposits, not through you having to spend it, but they're going to rob it through inflation. And on the back of all that, the final thing we will touch on it in the webinar is your property is 
probably not going to be yours because on the basis of the, the green agenda, the thing that the Biden administration and the Rishi Sunak idiots are propagating and portraying to the world as being a major problem, the, the climate change and the CO2, what they're doing in several countries now is introducing a, um, an environmental policy whereby just like the purchase of your uh, washing machines and your uh, electrical consuming items, if they're not triple A rated plus 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 efficient, then you will have to do repairs and maintenance and fixes to get them up to their energy efficiency and non-polluting status. That amount will be prohibitive for many people but on the back of that, very kindly, what they will do is they won't give you time to do it. They'll just basically declare it uninhabitable or non-sellable and the banks won't give you a mortgage to purchase it. So what they'll do is they'll freeze you out of the market and therefore what Klaus Schwab will do then and his team probably is compulsorily purchase it in the off chance that they may in the future be able to do something good with it. It's all a way of locking you down, keeping you in your house, taking everything away from you and having you completely docile to the Kim Jong-il, North Korean, Pol Pot, Stalinist, fascist, communist agenda, which is the road to serfdom. That's where they're taking you and I would suggest if you want to try and get on board someone who might be able to steer you in a slightly better direction than that, is it too late? Good question. I would suggest you come along to the webinar and begin following this channel for as long as it is in operation. So Peter of England saying thank you very much. Um, press the notifications and do all that nonsense. Bye bye.